you know, we always hear that we need to teach Marcus Garvey in the schools in order for young people to get a, a perspective of who the first national era of, J of Jamaica is. Because most youth, when you ask him about Marcus Garvey, I can't tell you say Marcus Garvey born in St. Anne, and him have an organization them you and I here. But here the problem I find now, you can't teach a subject in school when you do have no teacher to teach it. Because the teacher them is guilty of not knowing anything about Marcus Garvey. And I proved that just the other day, attending a school up in Mona, them having a Africa Day up there. And I stand in front of the teachers and the students them, and I say, I want Uno to tell me what the UNIA mean. You know, Mr. the teacher them do? They draw for them cell phone. I look for the answer on them cell phone. And right away, I said, see it there? That me I try to bring cross, you know. He said, if you're going on the phone for go look for UNIA, which you should have just know that half your head, it means say, uh, you're not ready yet to tell the people them about Marcus Garvey. You have to go get an understanding and an education about Marcus Garvey. And the irony, irony of it is this, that there are so many books about Marcus Garvey, not written about Marcus Garvey, you know, but written by Marcus Garvey in relationship to his words and his deeds and his action that was placed there by his second wife, Amy J.X. Garvey. Marcus Garvey did have the first wife, the name Amy Ashwood Garvey. And then he married to Amy J.X. Garvey. And it is Amy J.X. Garvey who decided that she was going to immortalize his words in a book named The Philosophy and Opinions of Marcus Garvey, book one and book two. And I would recommend that book to anyone who is listening to me right now and watching this. That you have not experienced the teachings of Marcus Garvey until you have read the philosophy and opinions of Marcus Garvey. Because in it, you will find out what the man of in his head and what he used to do as a liberator, as the greatest African man who passed through this earth here. Yeah. We have 20 million people that follow him and how much Liberty Hall, UNIA headquarters in all, including Cuba. Marcus Garvey need to be understood not by him born at St. Anne and him UNIA, because that is not saying nothing about Marcus Garvey. We're talking about what the man said, what him stand for. When him say Africa for Africans, those at home, those abroad, what him mean? When him say, if you have no confidence in yourself, you are twice defeated in the race of life. But with confidence, you have won even before you have started. When him say, emancipate yourself from mental slavery. Them can free your body, but none but we can free our mind. And Bamali come immortalize those words. We need to understand how important it is to African people right now especially in the Western world yeah. what Marcus Garvey stood for. Because Marcus Garvey has influenced Kwame Nkrumah, the first elected, democratically elected president of Ghana, to the point where Kwame Nkrumah put Marcus Garvey black star line, the star in the flag of Ghana, he has influenced Jomo Kenyatta, the man where them call the burning spear, where the artist Winston Rodney take him name from, the burning spear, Jomo Kenyatta. Nelson Mandela, and so much more. He has influenced. Yet still in the land of his birth, the land where them declare him the first national hero. It is not fitting to put him in school because even the teachers, don't know what Marcus Garvey stands for. As a matter of fact, most of them will fight against Marcus Garvey. Because if Marcus Garvey 
talk about Africa and black. A lot of these Christian minded people don't want to hear nothing about no Marcus Garvey. Africa and no black people are them something there. They must straight bend up. Marcus Garvey is very important to our future development as African people. Africa for Africans, those at home and those abroad. Out. Well, let me hear you say, Mountain, Mountain.